Hello everyone, Parul Kapoor here. Thanks for the introduction. So let's get into today's presentation, which is about general statistics used in Tableau. We are aiming to get you in and out within 30 minutes. Before we start, we are going to assume that you already know about Tableau interface and are comfortable making simple charts in Tableau. And this session is aimed to introduce you some statistical concepts involved in Trendline in Tableau. So hopefully at the end of this session, you will have more understanding towards the topic covered. So after doing a quick introduction to Trendline, we will discuss different options of trend lines available in Tableau. We will also discuss what are p-values and r-squared and how they can help us to define the best fit line. So let's start by introducing trend line. Trend lines, also known as best fit line in Tableau, are used to identify the correlation between two predicted values by observing the trend in both of them simultaneously. It is also used to predict the continuation of a certain trend of a variable. With just a couple of clicks, Tableau allows you to easily add trend line to visualization to highlight any correlation in scatter plots or line charts. Let us now add trend lines to a view. So to demonstrate, I have taken sample superstore data set and I'm going to add sales to the visualization and then profit. This gives us the aggregated data for the whole data set. So we are going to bring order ID into detail to disaggregate the data. Now we can see each point on the scatter pl plot as a different order. It roughly looked like that when the sales increases, profit also increases. But we can see much more clearly what the relationship is if we add a trend line. You can add a trend line in a couple of different ways. Either right click on your graph or chart and go to the trend line options and click show trend lines. By default, this gives you a linear model trend line. You may also go to analytics plane and under models you get a trend lines option. If you drag this trend line and bring to your chart, you get five different kind of options for trend line models available in Tableau. We will go into these a bit later. But for now, let's drag our trend line to a linear trend line model. I also want to mention here that to add trend lines to a view, it is important that both the axes must contain a field that can be interpreted as a number. For example, you cannot add trend lines to a view where product category is as a dimension which contains string on the column shelf and profit measure on the row shelf. However, you can add trend lines to a view of sales over time because both sales and time can be interpreted as numeric values. Now let's move back to our sales and profit scatter plot created using sample superstore data. There are many mathematical models for establishing trend lines. Tableau gives us five options. They are linear, logarithmic, exponential, power, and polynomial. So before discussing various kinds of Tableau trend line models available, let's first understand what a trend line tells us in this case by selecting a linear trend line model here. Hover over to any part of the trend line to see its description. This gives me an equation how profit and sales relate to each other. So we can see for each $1 value of sale, we have additional 17 cents of profit and the intercept is minus 23.2. So 
So it basically tells us that if we had thousand dollars of sales, then we have 0.17 multiplied by thousand minus 23.2 around 146.8 dollars of profit. Although this is not the exact relationship, but it is telling us what the average relationship is. Let us now discuss all different trend line model types available in Tableau one by one. Let's start with the linear trend line model, which I demonstrated just now. Linear trend line are lines of best fit that are used to estimate a linear relationship in the data. It is of this form where y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x, where y is the dependent variable which we are interested in and x is the independent variable that affects it. It represents the simplest trend line model in which we are estimating a relationship that is increasing or decreasing at a steady rate beta 1 and are therefore best used when the trend of data resembles a linear pattern. For example, the cost of products tends to be linear. If one pen costs dollar one, then 10 pence will cost dollar 10. So it will be appropriate to use linear trend line in that case. Let's now move to the next trend line option, which is available in Tableau is logarithmic trend line. Logarithmic trend line are curved lines of best fit that should be used when rate of change between variables increases or decreases quickly but gradually levels out. They are given by this equation. Since log of x is not defined for negative values of x, so any marks with values below zero for the independent variable will be filtered before the trend line is estimated. Logarithmic trend line should therefore be avoided in situations where a considerable portion of the marks contain negative values for the fields in the column shelf. Example for its use case can be like learning a new skill as a fashion of time, as a function of time. Improvement comes quickly for a new football player but then gets slower to become an expert. Third option which is available in Tableau is exponential trend lines. Exponential trend lines are again curved lines of best fit that are most suitable when rate of change between variables rises at increasingly higher rate. It is of this form in general. As logarithmic trend lines, it is also not defined for negative values of y. So the model should be avoided in situation where the field on the row shelf contains many negative values since these marks will be filtered out. An example can be like spread of a virus. This graph reminds me of COVID spread in many countries where one infected person can infect multiple new people and the virus will spread exponentially. Fourth option in Tableau is for power trend lines. Please note that power trend lines are a feature made available in Tableau 10.5 onwards, so it is not supported by earlier versions. Power trend lines are curved lines that are most appropriate used when the dependent variable increases at a predetermined rate beta 1. They are characterized by this equation. In the power model, both the variables are transformed by a natural log before the model is estimated. Since these quantities are not defined for negative values, any marks with negative values in either variable will be filtered out. Power trend line should be used with caution to avoid information loss. Example of the use case can be acceleration of a plane. The distance in kilometers covered as seconds go by increases at a predetermined rate that is plane's acceleration. The last option for trend line models available in Tableau is polynomial trend lines. Polynomial trend lines are curved lines that are most suitable when dealing with variables having 
fluctuating relationship. This is because they can flexibly assume different shapes depending on the user-defined order of polynomial, which in Tableau can take values from 2 to 8. So in Tableau, we can select the degree of polynomial which varies from 2 to 8. The polynomial equation is of this form, where last term in the sequence has an exponent equal to the order. In practice, a simple heuristic for deciding the polynomial order is to identify how many fluctuations or bends appear in the data. In this example, you can see two bends, maxima and minima, because the polynomial is of order 3. Example, trajectory of a kicked ball over time. The height reached by the ball over time is polynomial of order 2, a parabola. So, selecting a trend line model type totally depends on the use case, but also take into consideration the visual impact of the trend line, as linear trend line gives the simplest picture of trend of data when choosing a power trend line which might give you a better value of r squared. Using a polynomial of degree 8 can produce accurate trend lines, but one may have zoomed out quite a bit. If the graph looked like it sloped towards a curve fashion, then a linear trend line is not the best to use. The type of trend line can add to your visualization, but may hinder if you cannot explain why you use it or what the value it adds. However, a linear trend line does have the advantage to be able to clearly see whether the trend is upward or downward sloping and what the magnitude is easier than other lines. So till now we have investigated what a trend line is and how to create a trend line. Now let's go into describe trend line model option and investigate some interesting statistics behind it. I have taken a simple data set over here. It's using 14 different points to explore the relationship between y and x using a linear trend line. So after creating a trend line, if you right click on your trend line and go into describe trend line option, you can see a lot of details. It might look overwhelming, so let's go through this one by one. It says a linear trend model is computed for y given x. It means that x is used to predict y. The model may be significant for p less than or equal to 0 0.05. So that is what we say is statistically significant. And it means as we get more data points, the relationship between y and x will be maintained. Now let's discuss trend line model terms one by one. First one is model formula, which is x plus intercept here, which is formula for linear trend line model, where intercept is the point where x axis goes through on y axis. It is around 10 over here. There are 14 observations in the model and none are filtered out. Values are normally filtered out if they are null. So that values cannot be used in the model. However, in our case, we have no nulls. So we have zero filtered observations. Number of model observation basically gives you the number of rows in the view which is 14 over here and zero are filtered observations. Models degrees of freedom represents the number of parameters needed to completely specify the model. Linear, logarithmic and exponential trends have model degrees of freedom 2. Polynomial trends have model degrees of freedom 1 plus the degrees of polynomial. For example, a cubic trend has model degrees of freedom 4. So model degrees of freedom basically tells how many 
variables or values are used in our model. It's X and the intercept. So there are two model degrees of freedom over here. If we have X squared, X and the intercept, then there will be three model degrees of freedom and so on. Next is residual degrees of freedom. And it's basically calculating the difference between the model observations and the model's degrees of freedom. So over here, 14 minus 2 is 12. Next we have is sum squared errors and other numbers. But before discussing this, let's first discuss p-value and then we'll come back to sum squared error. So what is p-value? p-value is basically the measure of statistical confidence and basically lower the value of p the more confidence we have on our model for example if we had just these two points then it may look like that as the sales increases the profit decreases but it's not the case we see in general the sales increases the profit also increases so if you have less points, then you might not be confident that as you get more data, the pattern will be followed. This is what the p-value is telling us about. It is based on F statistics and is telling us that since p-value is very low, we are confident that the relationship between x and y will be followed if we get more points. Let's take an example where p-value is high. Here p-value is so high that anything above 0 0.05 is statistically insignificant. We can see that p-value is 0.6 here. So this model is not sure at all that if we get more points, the relationship will be followed. As we can see how the points are spread. So as a guideline, Anything with p-value above 0 0.05 is not considered statistically significant. In our first case, our p-value is low. So our trend line is statistically confident. So p-value is basically a measure of statistical confidence. So if we go back to our described trend line model, the next numbers which is SSE. So to understand some squared error or SSE, let us first understand what a best fit line is. A perfect fit trend line will be where you can put a x value you get the same y value. That will mean that all the points we see here will be exactly on the best fit line. So the closer the predictions are to the actual values, the better the fit is. So you want to draw a line which is as close as possible to all your data points. Here in this case, we have 14 different data points. So we want to draw a line as close as possible to all of them. That minimizes the distance from the point to the line. This is the general definition of best fit line. But more standard definition is that it is a line that minimizes the squared errors. To illustrate this, let's move to the Excel sheet. In this sheet, column A and B are our actual values of X and Y. And if we go back to our trend line model, we can see we are using the same values of X and Y in our trend line model. And predicted y, which is given by column C, uses the model in Tableau for the trend line. If we go back to our trend line, we can see that each value of y is given by 1.5375 times x plus 9.8766. And we are using the same formula here to calculate the value of predicted y. And column D has our errors. This shows the difference between Y 
and the predicted y and also known as residual. It tells us how far the predicted y is from the actual values. Column E basically square these errors and we get and when we sum these we get SSC which is also known as sum of square errors. This is the value which best fit line seeks to minimize. The best fit line is the line which minimizes the sum squared errors value. So to recap, a best fit line is one which minimizes the total squared differences between predicted and actual y. And you can see the value of SSC here is 69.3. And if we go back to Tableau, then we can again see that the value of SSC in our described trend line model is also 63.915. Next in our detail, we have MSC, which basically refers to mean square error, which is SSC divided by the corresponding residual degrees of freedom. So over here, 63.9 divided by 12 will be around 5.3. But now let's move to the another important stats, which is R squared. So what is R squared? R squared is a measure of how well the data fits the linear model. It is the ratio of the variance of the model error or the unexplained variance to the total variance in the data. More specifically, R squared gives you a percentage variation in Y explained by X variables and it ranges from 0 to 1. That is 0% to 100% of the variation in Y can be explained by the X variables. R squared measures how well the model fits the data. It is the proportion of the variation explained by the model and its formula is explained by variance in y divided by total variance in y. Let's move back to Excel and see the calculations so that it makes more sense to us. Now we have the same data set with x and y in column A and B. And this time we have variance y in column F. Variance in y is calculated by separate subtracting the average value of y from the y and squaring the difference. If y is very close to average, then these values are going to be small. Then we have SSC here, which we already calculated. Now, when we sum these, we get SST or total sum of squares. To get R square, we find the variation in Y explained by the model and divided by total variation in Y. So to get the variation explained by the model, we subtract the variation that is not explained by the model that is SSC, which is giving us the sum of the errors and subtracted from SST to get the total variation in Y. So R is the proportion of the variation explained by the model. So in this case, we have 87% of the variation explained by the model. It's generally a value between 0 and 1. So that's R squared, which explains how good or fit our model is. In essence, the closer to one, the better, as the model created by the trend line accurately describes 100% of all the variation around the mean. So to recap, what we have discussed today, so we have discussed trend line which are used to predict the continuation of certain trend of a variable. Trend line are also called best fit lines in Tableau and are statistical models that are used to determine the trend or relationship between variables.
We also discuss five different trend line models available in Tableau with use cases. Then we discuss p-values, which is a measure of statistical confidence. The lower the p-value, the greater the statistical confidence. The values be below 0 0.05 are considered statistically significant. In other words, a p is measure of how confident that the model will still be valid if you have lot more data. Then we discuss the best fit line which minimizes the total square differences between the predicted and the actual y values. And last, we discuss R squared that explains how good of fit our model is. The closer to one, the better is the model created by the trend line. R squared measures how well the model fits the data. It is the proportion of variation explained by the model and its formula is explained variance in y divided by total variance in y. So this brings us to the end of the session and I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and you will feel more confident in using and exploring trend lines in Tableau after the session. So now I pass back to our moderator who, is, who, who has been keeping tabs on any questions you have in our chat window.